Now let us carry out the same hypothesis testing one test in the census full data set. This is the long version of the data set and it has over 1,500, no, over 600,000 observations. So a lot of, a lot of observations. Um, again, this is our variable highest level of uh, schooling or highest level of education. And this is how it is coded one for less than five years then high school grad is a four five is trade certificate diploma etc etc and as i said 14 is university doctorate okay now with this data set we do again the same thing so first data select cases and if condition is satisfied and as you can see it was already entered but i can reset it and enter it again so you search for the variable highest level of schooling you select it is equal with 14 every respondent who has indicated that he or she has a phd then you click on continue and okay all right so as you can see all these cases were thrown out from our data set and only respondents who have a phd remain in our data set trying to find someone here where you can clearly see it but I'm having difficulties Let's see. anyway we will see in a second so analyze compare means one sample t-test again this is hypothesis testing one you click on it the same test so the test variable the interval ratio variable is total income the test value the population average we have already entered it is twenty five thousand dollars now let's see what will our output be when we run this test now for the expanded data set. As you can see in the first uh, output, the sample size is considerably higher than 6. It's 3,538 observations. So out of 600,000 respondents, we have 3,500 approximately who have indicated that they have a PhD. And their average income is $63,267, which is much, much higher than the population average that we have entered here, where we assume that the average Canadian earned around $25,000 in, back in 2001. Now, we just only need to answer the question if this difference is statistically significant or not. Statistical significance here means that we can generalize from 3,538 observations to the whole populations of PhD earners. So everybody who has a PhD in Canada, I would assume it is, the number would be around, I don't know, maybe 200,000 people. I don't know. I'm just giving an estimate. I think it's 1% of the population um, would, uh, would earn considerably higher or, or the difference between the incomes would be statistically significant. Uh, we only have to look at our significance in order to know if we reject or accept the null hypothesis. Remember that before comparing this number to 0 0.05 we need to divide it by two and if you double click on it you see that the number is a number very very close to zero so dividing it by two would also make it even closer to zero so it's less than five percent so you can reject the null hypothesis again the null hypothesis was telling you basically that there is no statistical significant difference between the sample average and the population average and that these folks here do not have distinct characteristics from the population from the large population uh, you reject this and you say no um, individuals who have a PhD do earn uh, more than the average Canadian and this difference is statistically significant it wasn't caused by random chance and we can generalize from 3538 observations to the whole population of PhD holders and this is the end of the test so with this, I just wanted to show you what a difference it makes if you have few observations 
versus you have a lot of observations. I'm just scrolling back here to the original test that I'm discussing in the first video is when I was um, carrying out this test on the census short or data set with only 1,500 total observations where we had only six individuals indicating that they have a PhD that this test turned out to be not significant. Whereas when I moved to the larger data set, we received a considerably higher sample size for PhD, for students or for individuals who have a PhD. Uh, and this difference turned to be, uh, turned to be, uh, turned to be significant. Uh, thus, remember that sometimes significance or many times significance also depends on the sample size. And of course, it's very difficult to generalize from few observations why it's much easier to do so if you have a higher sample size.